So good afternoon, Grand Rising, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, whatever time it is, time it is in your locale. Today is Saturday, and it is March 19th, okay? Tomorrow will be the vernal or spring equinox, March 20th, 2022, depending on where you are in the world. And I have come on to do an astral experience report, or what I call portaling reports sometimes, or I call them astral reports. And what you're hearing in the background is Egyptian duduk or duduk music. Um, it's Egyptian night music and it's meditation music. So I will put the link for it in the box if you're interested in it. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the veterans of Vietnam and their families who are survivors. And I also would like to say that yesterday's upload about American war crimes and ethnic cleansing an event happened early this morning saturday march 19th 2022 where a satanist came to me on astral and basically wanted to test my gangster so when I was speaking yesterday to Mr. Kanye West about the situation, the alleged, you know what I'm saying, goings on, the alleged spiritual goings on, pardon me, behind the scenes with um, Kim Kardashian and the uh, alleged or possibility that uh, his mother, Mrs. Uh, Miss or Mrs. Donda West, Dr. Donda West, was possibly sacrificed by uh, some related parties. Um after I spoke on that, there was a celebrity man who got a witch who is in his coven to basically test my power, test my gangster on astral. And while I did admittedly give an, an, an invitation and an indication that I was open to either Mr. West or, you know, whoever he would like to get to speak to me on astral or in a dream or telepathically if he had any particular questions he wanted answered about certain things you know if it if it uh, struck his fancy and so admittedly I put the invitation out there for him but others bit that bait which is not to be unexpected it's okay but in them doing so they are now going to be exposed because see here's the thing I don't uh report Things that go on on astral or in dreamscape unless I am told to do so. Okay, I have to be told to do so by higher deities, you know, archangels, gods, goddesses, etc. Usually I will take my own little personal notes. I always keep a lot of notebooks around and uh, I move on. I don't say anything. I'm silent about it. But in this particular instance, it was so aggressive and it was so... hmm. How can I say, um, what, what would be the wording here? It was so out of pocket that I just had to come and tell you all. Okay. I just had, I just had to, I, 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 I was given the green light by Archangel Uriel, my uncle to come and tell you this experience because this individual has skated under the radar as a fucking Satanist for a long time. And I'm about to blow his motherfucking cover because he shouldn't have played with me like that. And I know he jealous of my gifts. And y'all gonna be surprised as a motherfucker when you hear who it is. Who it is. Huh? I'm gonna pause this for one high second real quick light. And I'm gonna turn this fan on because I'm getting hot already. Okay, the air, the air blowing, child. But I'm under about four blankets because I like four, four blankets on my bed. Like I, I like my, my blankets to be stacked up. A lot of comforters and stuff. And I'm about to turn this fan on and I'm about to talk. And I'm about to tell you about this goddamn old ass black Satanist that y'all had thought was innocent for the past 25, 30 goddamn years. Okay, hold on real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, that was just a momentary pause on your end. It was like 30 seconds on my end. So Morgan Freeman, I know y'all probably going to be like, what the fuck, Bree? What, what, what? Eh, eh, I ain't going by Bree no more. I'm going by my real name, which is Maria. Y'all can call me Bree if y'all want to, but 
that ain't my real name. That name was given me to me by an evil ass motherfucking secretive adoptive mother, so called mother. But you know, I ain't you know. I know y'all probably like read what the fuck or whatever, metaphysical what the fuck or whatever. Train going off in the background. Let me before I go into this here preface this and say everything i'm about to say is spiritual communication it is my personal experience in a dream-like state but also very vivid okay no substances were involved it is what we call an astral experience in the spiritual communities okay and what that entails is the astral body or your spirit body going on a journey having an experience and you see various things and things can occur or you're able to do things that you cannot do in this dimension aka the third dimension or this reality that we live every day going to work you know cooking cleaning playing sports all that stuff so i have to preface it with allegedly legally because i don't have any tangible proof to prove that this is true I'm telling you what the fuck happened in my astral experience. It's my personal experience, okay? And so anybody who, you know, has a problem, it's just my personal retelling. And uh, yeah, I don't have any proof to to show you that this is what this person is. But, you know, do your own divining, do your own journey and go and study the individual if you would like. and, And you figure out what you what you think about it you know what i'm saying i always tell you trust your own intuition go test the spirits and see whether what things that i have said be true okay now morgan freeman is allegedly a motherfucking satanist and i'm gonna tell you why see yeah he ain't he you know what i'm saying the motherfucker always been evil he always been evil and hard and that's why he ain't got no woman okay and see Y'all have remember him as Joe, Principal Joe from Lean On Me. That ain't Principal Joe no more. Allegedly, this man done been a Satanist for the past 25 years. Okay. And what had happened was yesterday when I was on that upload talking to Mr. West, Morgan Freeman somehow got word. Yes, the Morgan Freeman, the actor. The one that be narrating on Nat Geo and be narrating them Bible stories and them Bible documentaries and them Holy Land documentaries and the one that played God in that movie. Yeah, you see, you need to go back and check that movie. Now, I ain't telling you to go watch it to give him no fucking royalties or no energy. I'm telling you to go back and look at some clips of him playing in that movie, God, and how that looks like Lucifer. He was playing an energy of Lucifer, and it was very facetious, and it was a satanic role. But they told you that were God. The black man were God. The black man is a Satanist. That one there is allegedly a Satanist. And it was reminding me when I thought about it and I woke up this morning up out of this astral experience with him and with his satanic witch friend. What it reminded me of was that scene in Constantine, which is a Marvel Constantine. John Constantine is a Marvel anti-hero, not a villain and anti-hero. There's a difference between an anti-hero and a villain. Okay. There's heroes, there's villains, and there's anti-heroes, okay? Uh, I often identify with anti-heroes and heroes, but sometimes I do kind of see the point of the villain. A lot of times I play devil's advocate. For those of you that have listened long enough, you know that. So when I'm telling you what this reminded me of, go and look at the imagery for yourself. Go check out uh, Constantine with Keanu Reeves, particularly the scene where Lucifer comes down into the into the hospital with the black tar on his feet in a white suit and you go and look at that and compare it to what morgan freeman was playing in that movie called god and you go and read the energy and listen just watch the body language read the energy and all of that and you see that that's the same luciferian and satanic energy now lucifer lucifer and satan are two different archetypes but I'm telling you my experience and what I pick up. You don't have to believe it, okay? What happened was Morgan Freeman, I don't know how the fuck Morgan Freeman found what I said to Mr. West, but either way he found it. A lot of celebrities listen to my channels. 
I've said that before. I wasn't bluffing. I'm not trying to poof myself up or, and toot my own horn. It's just true. A lot of celebrities watch different YouTubers and especially d uh, diviners and, and mediums and prophets in the spiritual communities. That's no secret, right? Wait, they have platforms too. And, and sometimes what happens is you subscribe to one of their channels. If they have a digital media platform, a news outlet or something, you know, a gaming outlet or whatever you subscribe, if you have uh, a certain name, it may draw them to pay attention and click it's no different than if you follow them on instagram they may go and check out your page and then start paying attention this is the natural order of things on the internet so i don't know how he got to my page but either way archangel uriel told me that morgan freeman heard heard my uh message to mr west about hey get with me on astral get or, or not mr west get with me because i know he's not into that but you know if he trusts a spiritualist or somebody that i've had a positive experience with for him to you know send them to talk to me if he had a particular question or if he had additional things that he wanted me to look into and um this 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 very much intrigued mr morgan freeman and, and, and while i am you know i'm saying skinning this cat i am gonna be respectful only because i feel that i should uh that's the only reason why okay um not because i respect satanists or because i like satanists i'm just i'm mm. <laughs> okay i digress but i ain't gonna be respectful in some parts re not regarding him but uh, regarding some other things okay um however he got a hold of it he did and he became very curious when I put that open invitation out there. Now, some people might say, well, you set yourself up for that. No, the fuck I didn't because I was told to do it. I don't set myself up for a motherfucking thing. It's all divinely ordained and divinely written. Okay. And see people that play around on astral and play tricks and shit. They always get fucked up when they play with me. I don't know about them playing with anybody else, but they always get fucked up when they play with me for a good reason. Okay. So obviously i put the invitation out there because somebody had to get their ass whooped because somebody thought that they was gonna jump in the ring with me and play with me and that it was gonna be okay and it wasn't it, it wasn't dear soul it wasn't it wasn't okay so be careful like i said before jumping in my dreams coming on astro thinking you're gonna start fucking shit whether it be on this platform another platform or in the spiritual realms be careful with that shit because I don't fucking lose. And I'm going to tell you that right now. You might say that's cocky. That's arrogant. I don't fucking lose. I'm not Michael for nothing, baby. I'm not the peace to Sophia for nothing. I'm not the queen of heaven for nothing. I'm not the mother of God, a.k.a. Yahweh, for nothing. I'm not the wife of Zeus, Ra, for nothing. So, I'm not the most powerful pharaoh, female pharaoh that was ever in Kemet as had Shep Sweet Maya Kari. I am I am not for nothing. Okay? Okay, so let's get that established. Get on my fucking level, ho, before you start speaking. Anything about who I am and what I am and all of that. Alright, because a lot of people try to keep me from finding out and it and, and it didn't it worked for a while and then the the appointed time came and and it and it ceased to be an issue. All their little scales and their blinders fell off they weren't necessarily on me they were just trying to build walls around me so that i wouldn't look okay so that i couldn't see trying to keep me isolated and all that so obviously his interest got piqued however he came across it he did so what occurred was the scenery started out with this mall area and i was with a group of people uh, a couple of ladies and a man it was about six of us i was kind of like the you could say the spare tire uh the group kind of stayed together like five individuals and i was like the sixth person but i was always hanging back like almost like a chaperone and that's how i am in quite a few experiences i'll be standing back watching or to be one-on-one, -on -one, like i told you recently with an ex experience with the experience where i said people were being torched by flamethrowers because they had some kind of disease in new york city or it'll be a situation where there's a group but i'll either be leading a group or somebody else will be leading a group and that person will either leave get injured disappear and i'll have to step up and lead then 
or it'll be a situation like in this experience where there was a group of people and I was hanging back. So they're walking along in the mall and all that. And I'm kind of walking far behind them, not that far, but far enough, maybe 15 feet behind. And I'm just scoping, you know, my head is always on a swivel in the spiritual and in the physical. People, it's hard for people to creep up on me and entities as well. You know, I have to tell you soon about how when I went around smudging this particular home that I was in at one time, how the demons slammed the door three times. The demons in the house slammed the door three times because they were mad because I was smudging the house. So when I tell you that frankincense and myrrh and copal are powerful, they didn't slam the door on no white sage. They didn't slam the door on no fucking co- uh, Palo Santo. They slammed that door when I start burning that copal, that Mayan copal and that frankincense and myrrh blend that and i don't mean no incense sticks i'm talking about that real raw resin from the tree i ain't talking about no hem incense i ain't talking about no knock champa i'm talking about the real deal they couldn't stay the fuck up in that house and they slammed the door on the way out three times i went around the house three times smudging it and they slammed the door three different times the same fucking door they slammed one door twice and they slammed another door right beside it a second time a third the third time they slammed the second door beside it I did it again. I smudged the house again that I was in. Okay. And they slammed the door another time, a totally different door. That time they slammed one of the bedroom doors because they were mad I was running them out the house. See? So when I told you I walked through places and them motherfuckers be ducking around corners and shit and backing up and shit, that's what they do. Now, granted, when I smudged and and the smoke went out and I, you know, I opened the doors and shit, when I smudged and shit, they left, but when I closed the fucking doors, they come back. So see, that's the problem when you got people in a particular house that's demon possessed, the demon's not going to leave if they're attached to the person. See, because the person's possessed. So it's almost like expecting the person to come out of their fucking clothes. They still in their clothes. The clothes are attached to them. There's, it's, it's, or it's like expecting a person to come out of their skin. They're, the skin is on them. So the demons are on them and in them. So you can smudge it all you want to if the person is still possessed, the house is still possessed, that they're living in or the place wherever they're dwelling. More on exorcism later. I just wanted to tell you about that because... In this particular situation where I was following these people around in this mall, it was like a department store, kind of like a, you know, Dillard's or Macy's or something like that. Yeah. Um, after a time of walking around behind this group, I came to a clothing rack and on this clothing rack was dresses and shirts. And they were my clothes. I could tell they were my clothes. I could feel they were my clothes. And it was like one of those fashion, you know, fashion designer or uh, stylist racks, an extra rack that you can just hang clothes or coats on. Steel rack. And it was in the aisle way near the department store, you know, in the department store section. It was just one in the aisle that specifically had clothes on it for me. And the clothes were like, so there was a couple of boat neck, long sleeve shirts or three quarter sleeve shirts one of them was striped another one was a solid color and then there were several dresses but they were made similar to what i've seen some of the older excuse me older ladies in portugal wear. uh they wear petticoats so they like in some of the fisher fishermen villages villages or fisher some of the seaside villages in portugal some of the older ladies they wear the traditional skirts and long socks or long stockings up to their knees and there were several petticoats or several slips or several layers under their skirts and their skirts are very thick it kind of reminds me a lot of the ladies that are in the andes the andean women of peru and bolivia that wear skirts like that so i had that's what i had on this rack i had a couple of long sleeve shirts none of them were short sleeve they were either three quarter or longer And then there were these dresses, but they were kind of like made like an apron on the top. So from the waist up was like an apron, full coverage in the front, the sides and the back are out and then a strap, you know, straps. And then the skirt was very full and long. It either came down to the knee or came down to like mid calf. 
didn't come down to the floor and I noticed that all the colors except for a couple of the shirts were red and orange and that's for my sacral chakra and root chakra energy and for the spiritual attacks that I've been through most of them have been sacral and root chakra attacks I as Archangel Michael rule the root chakra each angel each one of the archangels rules over one of the seven chakras and Michael I I am over the root I'm, I'm over the south in the southerly direction in the world so queen of the south queen the queen of sheba okay same thing that also ties into that you know what i'm saying uh latin american lineage afro latin lineage indigenous lineage and all that now i do have lineage in northern countries but that's another subject for another day i've talked at length about that stuff um all of them were patterns of orange one of them was a uh, kente cloth one of the dresses was made out of kente cloth the traditional print one of them was like a checkerboard orange and red and another one was another type of pattern just orange and I think one of them was actually orange and purple which that purple is crown chakra the three main chakras that people do try is you know root sacral and crown for me they sometimes do try to solar but those are the three ones they try to hit or have tried to hit you know um and I I just saw my hands I saw the rack saw the clothes and I saw my hands I, I could see myself I could see the rack through my eyes and then I could see myself as like an out-of-body experience as in I, could, I was standing there and I was standing behind my body so I, I that happens a lot in my experiences where I will see through the eyes of whatever body or vessel I'm in and then I will also see outside of that vessel or as a panoramic view like a camera panning around I'll be able to see the whole scene as well so I was moving through. I don't know which one I picked, but he, obviously I picked one. And then all of a sudden, this group and I ended up at a home. And it, it was a home in the country. I don't know what state it was. I didn't feel that at the time, but I know what state it was now. <laughs> Once I came out of the experience, I was able to quickly figure it out. So at the time that it appeared, so we ended up in the front yard of this property. And there was an old country road. It was kind of like one of those roads that you see on those scenic, beautiful nature pictures where there's trees hanging over the road, you know, and it's a canopy. And it's just like your ideal road for taking a long, leisurely drive through the countryside. You know, bikers love those kind of roads. Is You know, that's the kind of scenery it was. And then we were in the yard all of a sudden. And I saw the house briefly, just just for a moment. I can't even really describe the house because it was so quick. And then... All of a sudden, I was at the house, like at the front door, looking back out into the yard where we had just come from. There was a vehicle in the yard, almost like a sprinter type little van, you know, those little sprinter vans. You can search those on the Internet if you want to see what it looks like. But it had more of a box. So instead of the sprinter being shaped like a rectangle, the sides stuck out more and it was older style. That's what it looked like. And as I was standing at the door, I could see the group there. As I said, I often the whole pretty much the whole time in this experience up until a certain point I was away like I was behind the group or I was a distance from them either 10 or 15 feet away sometimes 20 feet away and that represented spiritual separation as well and it also represented spiritual um, provision spiritual protection and spiritual guardianship which is pretty much the same as protection, but like I said, I like a chaperone energy. I felt like I was on a field trip with people and I was there to make sure everything was okay. That's what it felt like to me. And it really was a field trip because if you think about it, the astral realms are fields. They're dimensions, they're planes of existences. And that is the field. Many of us have warfare experiences in these fields. You know, so there, you know, some may call it the astral scape, the astral realms, the astral worlds, the ether. The ether is slightly different in my opinion, but either way, it's a field. It's a different scape. It's a different environment. So it was a field trip. So I'm standing at the front door watching them and I saw a truck just like the one that was parked in the yard. It was just, you know, haphazardly parked on the grass. It wasn't in any special spot. It drives down another truck just like it, just slightly different color, drove down the road and passed by the house, went into the woods. 
So this house was secluded. And eventually we ended up inside of the house. Before we got inside of the house, I'm looking out over the yard. So the sprinters on the right hand side kind of like parked diagonally in the yard near the tree line. The five people who I do not know were there in the yard, maybe a hundred feet from the door step. There was no concrete driveway, just grass. And all of a sudden, when I'm looking at the five people, that truck passed by, like I said, same one as the one that was in the yard, but it was just different color. And as, after the truck passed by, suddenly Morgan Freeman appeared. So obviously he was dropped off. He done caught a goddamn, he done hitched a goddamn ride. <laughs> he done hitched a goddamn ride to his house on the Astra. On the Astro. Because all of a sudden when that truck went into the woods, which was a goddamn portal. Remember I said the street, the road, old country road with canopies over it and shit like trees curved over it like in the creepy movies. And in them old period shows where they be riding down the fucking road in a horse and carriage or with a horse and carriage and shit. A old road like that. That was a portal. That truck went through that fucking under that canopy of trees and all of a sudden morgan was right there in that fucking yard with them five other people and he looked at me and he looked just like he do with that gray afro like he do in the media he looked at me and he grinned he didn't really say nothing he just grinned he said something to the group but i don't know what he said to the group i was just looking at him then we ended up inside the house suddenly Things don't happen seamlessly like, okay, we walk from car down sidewalk into under the porch, open door, inside. It doesn't always happen like that in astral experiences. You just be teleporting. Sometimes you just be outside and you be inside. You know what I'm saying? You be down the street and then you be in your, in, you know, in the yard, right? You know, it's like instant like that. Okay, that's why it's astral travel because you don't have the slower nature of 3d of physical movement of a of a flesh body that's heavier and denser and and has to deal with gravity and move slower okay it's, it's spirit so we end up inside the house the house was dark than a motherfucker dark and creepy it reminded me let me think of a movie it reminded me of a house similar to the adams family on the inside but just not as dark because like they had black walls and shit on the inside of that house this house really kind of had like more of a dark purple, very dark teal vibe, a dark teal, a dark emerald color. Um, there was some black floors. There was some black areas. There was a little sunlight coming in, like almost from like a old school greenhouse. You know, I'm going to have to find a picture of a home that gave me the kind of lighting that was in the foyer and in the you know open salon space of this old home it was like one of those old victorian style homes that had the, the parlor you know where they used to when people would die they would put the body right there in the parlor and people would come and visit the body the deceased person at the house that kind of old house 1800s and i don't know what kind of home he lives in but i'm just telling you what it was like on astro it was creepy okay uh, I don't remember going upstairs. I just remember all of this stuff taking place down however many floors the house had. I think it had at least two. It wasn't that tall, but it was just old and creepy. And we ended up inside the house. And as soon as we got inside the house, he was saying something. I don't remember what he said. A lot of times I don't remember exactly what people say. In those kind of experiences unless it's significant or unless it's directly to me sometimes I'll still it'll still be wiped for me sometimes the angels or my ancestors will still take it from me if it's not something they want me to recall they won't take it from me completely but they'll put it they'll like archive it to where I can't recall it and even if I ask them sometimes they'll say you don't need to know that right now so he was talking he was basically like welcome and and um um, boy, I have something, it was, it was an energy of, he didn't say this exactly, but it was an energy of welcome and boy, we, I have something in store for you all. Uh, and he just kept looking at me and grinning, like, like almost like a joker grin, like, huh, <laughs> huh, 
that's that's the energy i got off of him just looking at me right morgan about 80 years old y'all morgan is with the shits okay morgan is with the shits you fucking morgan now i know i look young and shit i know i had told y'all i'm 38 i ain't motherfucking 38 i told y'all also i'm much older than that i told y'all my fucking birth certificate fake as a motherfucker i ain't 38 the only real shit in that birth certificate is it's an anagram of my real chart and i will really i'm really a damn third uh, uh, uh scorpio i ain't 38 though i'm much older than that shit i'm in my goddamn 60s i know that shit sound crazy i'm in my motherfucking 60s i don't you know what i'm saying you ain't got to believe the shit that's that super soldier shit i told y'all that i told y'all they be doing that gene modification i told y'all you know y'all think i be playing sometimes like y'all be think thinking that i be bullshitting y'all don't be blowing smoke up y'all asses i be telling y'all the fucking truth is as as true as i can tell it my nigga <laughs> my g my god my god is i don't be bullshitting you i be telling you like yo this shit is real they really got shit out there that can age you like can slow your aging down they really got time travel i told y'all they had time travel and then they come out with the big yellow fucking satellite talking about yeah we got time travel satellite we see into another gal- another galaxy <laughs> i told you you know you've heard of the super soldier you know i ain't getting into that but i'm just saying i ain't 38 my ass older than that morgan you fucking with a let's just say it morgan you fucking with a 38 year old but you know my ass more like close to fucking 70 you know my ass old right that's why i be talking like grandma a lot of y'all southerners and a lot of y'all people that know how grandmothers talk and how grandmothers cook and move and their mannerisms y'all y'all see that shit come out of me that's because i'm not 38 (laughs) i'm not really 38 my nigga i am really 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 grandmother age Okay, that's that matriarchal crone energy. I, I be I be with the young petty shit sometimes. I do call that shit up sometimes. But I got an old soul. That ain't just, I'm not talking about no old soul stuff though. I'm talking about chronological physical age is not really 38. I'm telling you. I had said, you know what I'm saying? Arjuna uh is a grandmother too. That's why she love old school. I love old school too you know what i'm saying i had thought she was older than me i think i'm a little bit older than her but they won't tell me my real then they tell me my real age they eventually did tell me but i'm not allowed to tell it anyway i'm i just say i'm damn near 70 and you like i know y'all like damn you don't look your age as it is no i don't that's what super soldier programs and and all kind of genetic engineering and shit is for (laughs) okay and also being a reincarnated being you not going to look your fucking chronological age. Or they're going to give you an age and you ain't really that age. And I know people that are on a certain mind frequency will understand this, but others won't. That's okay. Morgan, you were fucking with me, Morgan. Morgan, you really my age, my nigga. You, you really like, you really like only like eight years older than me. Meaning, like, I know you about 80, but you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't even really got 10 years on me, so I understand why you was looking at me like I was a, you know what I'm saying, a piece of fresh meat. I see. But I had heard, Morgan, that you was jealous of my spiritual gifts. You impressed, but you jealous. Mm-hmm. Because, see, I know, Morgan, that you was allegedly a Satanist and that you became a Satanist about 25 years ago. And that even though you were Satanist, you ain't got no motherfucking power. None. You got a power to do some astral projection or for somebody to get you in there. If somebody open it up and help you do it or taught you how to do it. But you ain't got no actual physical, uh, not physical, spiritual powers. And so you wanted to put me and, and your coven member in a girl fight. You wanted to see a cat fight. See, that what old niggas do. Old lecherous ass, debaucherous ass, crusty ass ashy ass niggas want to see women fight they want to see young women's young tenderonies you know what i'm saying that still got that jiggle in they ass and in they titties you know what i'm saying it be sitting up right and tight you know what i'm saying they want to see them fight no god see you have set this shit up morgan and i don't respect you for that because you messy you messy boots messy morgan that one i'm gonna call you see i had called jesse jackson messy mess e m-e-s-s dash e messy jackson you messy morgan 
Okay? Uh, you had a treat in store for me. So Morgan had this white woman, allegedly. You know, this is my actual experience. This is what the fuck happened. I woke up sweating, yo, <laughs> sweating. Not because I was under pressure, but because it was intense. Some people might say, oh, intense is pressure. No, it was intense because it happened quickly. All of a sudden, this white woman appeared. See, Diane, Diane, Diane in San Jose, California, Diane, are you 46 years old? You a Satanist and you a part of Morgan's coven, allegedly. You appeared and you decided to engage in spiritual battle with me. And what you were doing was you were, I know you remember, I'm just telling it for the audience because it's what the fuck happened. You were jumping around into different forms and seeing how fast I was on the draw. You want to see how quick I was off the fucking hip to pow pow that ass, right? Okay, well, it wasn't no actual weaponry involved. I just used pure spiritual gifts. So what this woman was doing was she was appearing as a preteen 12-year-old girl, but her face, you could look in her eyes and see she was an old witch, an old satanic witch, but her body was that of a 12-year-old, and she had on a dirty, light pink, almost like a... a a scraggly negligee type of like a like a girl's nightgown sleeveless nightgown spaghetti strap nightgown and she was filthy she was filthy uh filthy dirty you know um had the pink nightgown on which was scraggly and, and like it looked it looked like it had been stretched out of place around the neck and the arm holes and it was dirty it had dirt on it. it it was scraggly you know it it looked like the kind of material they put witches in 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 horror movies they make them look real real fucked up right well she also had like this the hair looked blonde at sometimes but it was also like a pale pink and i mean she just looked filthy you could tell she was a witch anybody with any kind of spiritual know-how would have known she was a witch if they were able to see her for some reason, I don't know if the rest of the group could see her because I seem to be the only one engaging. And then at first, I don't think they saw her. They saw Morgan, whoever these people were, but they didn't see her at first because I, I was engaging with her and they didn't seem to be reacting. And then all of a sudden they did become aware somehow. But I was too busy doing what I was doing. She was turning, she was turning into a baby doll. She would morph from being in the preteen white girl's vessel to into a plastic white baby doll, like them bald headed Goo Goo Gaga baby dolls. And she would shape shift from that, from the doll back into the girl form, and then she would disappear altogether into invisible astral form. Y'all know people be astral projecting, and then she would be laughing. <laughs> Like candy, bet you can't catch me now. <laughs> Remind me of some Annabelle shit, right? I mean, in the the movie Annabelle. Um, and so when she, I don't know how what triggered me to start trying to destroy this woman. I just did. Um, <laughs> when she turned into the doll the first time, I threw fire at it, just with bare hands, just wow just flamethrower just fire came out of my hand and then it just hit the doll and the doll just blew up into you know it lit up in the flames and, and turned black and shit and started melting then uh she was laughing like ha, 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 you didn't get me you know type of shit and i'm looking around and she's like like transporting if you've seen the marvel movies where nightcrawler transports in midair he's just boom right there in midair and then back down somewhere else and then it was well, not transporting it's teleporting just from one spot to another rapidly like that that's what she was doing but she was going back and forth from the girl form to the doll form because even though i destroyed the first doll she went invisible and teleported to another part of the room and i would look in that part of the room and i couldn't see her 
but I could hear her and I would throw something that direction and then she would laugh and be like, ha ha ha. And then she would turn into another doll nearby and I would destroy that one. And she would, ha 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 ha, you almost got me there. Ha 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 ha, you're quicker than I thought. <laughs> it was that maniacal fucking laughter. This shit was wild. It was wild. So finally, she turned into the girl, the the preteen girl form again, and I was close enough to her, and I grabbed her by the fucking arm. And when I grabbed her by the arm, I sent a uh, electric shock through my hand on into her body, and I could just see the shock going into her arm, but it was dissipating before it even traveled up her body to be able to shock her. And she looked at me, and she was like, <laughs> "Oh, silly electrocution! That doesn't work." <laughs> And she, <laughs> this shit was crazy, y'all. This shit was motherfucking crazy. And since she disappeared after I tried electrocution, and then she turned in that last motherfucking time, that bitch had got me. I had got her ass each time except for when she turned into the girl and I grabbed her by the arm and electrocution didn't work. I said, okay, see, I done threw a couple of different elements. I kept using fire on her because I knew she was a witch. No disrespect to those who have been burned at the stake. But I'm just saying I was automatically using fire and um, and like destructive energy. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Like I said, I've got over they said over 6000 different spiritual gifts and they don't all have names. And even if they did, they wouldn't tell me. So um, I when she turned into the girl and I tried I was going to electrocute her. It didn't work. She was like, ah, yeah, electrocution city. Shit, silly, that's not going to work. And then she turned into the doll again. And that time, as soon as she said, oh, that's not going to work, I was kind of, I had a shock look on my face like, what, bitch, what? And then I drew my hand back and she turned into the doll again right in front of me. And that's when I used, I was using both of my hands sometimes to throw the uh, fire and the destructive energy that I was using, trying to catch her and get her. But when the electrocution didn't work by me, phys actually not physically, because this is a spiritual experience, but by me grabbing her arm and attempting to electrocute her. Yes, like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Yes, that type of shit. I don't know if he touches people, but he throws lightning. <laughs> Shout out to my husband. My husband said the Archangel Uriel. He said, uh, Uriel, I hope my wife's eyes ain't gonna turn white like, like Raiden. He's like, as long as that shit don't happen, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I was like, no, my eyes ain't never turn white and shit. But, and Uriel was like, no, 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 none of that. So anyway, this was our spiritual conversation one day, not too long ago. But yeah, Raiden throws lightning bolt. And so, um, it was similar to that, but I was actually touching her. It didn't work. So she turned into the doll one more time right in front of me and that's when I took both of my hands and combined two elements so I really didn't combine them I used them in a subsequent um in a subsequent manner or sequential manner so it was air and it was pressure which is not an individual force but it's actually it is force itself pressure is force itself but it was air and air and pressure which would be air pressure and it was something that I know spiritually I heard in my spirit black force that that is what it's called black force so it's air and pressure which is a force air itself is an elemental force and then there was one called black force and those three combined I hit that fucking doll when she was in that doll I hit that fucking doll and that shit went <sighs> boom and it just disintegrated in thin air like a black hole like it was literally like just a time suck, like everything just sucked back in and she was gone. She was really, really fucking gone that time. And so when I talked to Archangel Uriel, he said, you know, the black force is what it's called. It's called black force. And it's like a black hole type of energy. And he said, yes, when you would got her ass that time, she actually was thrown out of the astral experience and woke up sweating in her fucking bed. Hell, I woke up sweating too. Once I did that, Morgan looked looked shocked. Like, look, like, look at this, this. What the fuck, this bitch? And he had a shock look. He didn't say nothing. He was looking just like, what the fuck? And I instantly woke up in my bed and I was drenched in sweat. That was this morning. 
Saturday, March 19, 2022, at approximately 7.30 a.m. when I woke up. Well, this woman was on West Coast time, so she would have woke up at 4.30, okay? And that's that time people be liking to fuck around on Astra, which is what, 2 to 4, 2 to 5? They like to play around a lot, so there's your other in- indication that the shit really fucking happened. And they said when I did that, fu- when I gave, put that black force on her motherfucking ass, that threw her out of the actual experience, and she woke up and went, you know, was automatically put back in her physical body, and woke up in her bed, scared and fucking shaking and sweating. So Diane, don't play with me no more. Diane in San Jose, and that may not even be a name that you go by in the public but that's your real name though diane d-i-a-n-e the typical spelling you 46 years old don't play with me no more you neither morgan because see i know that y'all morgan don't have the power morgan got that witch in his coven to try me because they wanted to see how powerful i am and she learned her fucking lesson i can pull damn near anything out of my hat baby on the spiritual realms so if you want to play them kind of games, I can't stop you. You can, you got free will, but just know what you're getting into. Because if I can conjure black force, I can conjure anything because black force is any and everything. Black force is the abyss. Black force is black matter. That is a black hole. Black holes eat everything, but they can also create everything. Okay. So if you don't know about dark matter or black matter, you might want to go and school yourself on some fucking astrophysics and some quantum physics and find out about that shit. And see, you saw me conjure that fucking black force out of my fucking hands and out of thin air and destroy her in that form. Now, I didn't destroy her astral form or her body, but I'm saying I destroyed her on that element and threw her out. It threw her out. It threw her out of the experience and back into 3D reality. So stop playing these astral games. I don't suggest you do that because people can get hurt like that and they can also get their spiritual gifts uh, stripped like that. And I ain't trying to save the bitch no fucking trouble. I'm just saying. Because I know there's a lot of curious people out there that listen to me that want to test my gangster and are jealous of my gifts and all of that. And oh yeah, to this woman who's talking about uh, angels can be bullies too. I know you watch my channel and I can see the green eyed monster in you. And I'm aware that you're jealous of my gifts too. I just want to let you know, whatever you and that lady have going on is, a, is on is on is y'all's business i don't have nothing to do with that but i know your title of your video was a dig at me telling her that she is an archangel and that is what she is so she's not a bully she's never been a fucking bully i know bullies when i see them but me and my um how can i say my angel friends and family those of the, the the three of us that have evaluated you me and two other archangels very powerful archangels that have evaluated you understand your envy of me and your envy of her now i understand you all have some kind of past you know i'm saying skirmish or whatever that's none of my business the only way i got wind of it is because i watch and support her channel and her readings okay and because i have mentioned her and all of that and people have tried uh, one person tried to turn me against her excuse me, because that one person found out, excuse me, that she is an angel. And that's why she tried to, she tried to, you know, fuck up the situation because she didn't want me to reveal her identity, reveal this lady's identity, the one who is an archangel. Okay. So your little channel, your little uh, video talking about angels can be bullies too, was a dig at her because you put her name in the title and you mentioned her, but you said it like that because you listened to me. So I just want you to know that I'm aware of you. You are no empress. You are fucking karmic. And and I just wanted to say this, not because I have any beef with you and I'm not starting any beef. I'm just saying this because I can see the jealousy in your face. We can see the wickedness and the evil in your face. And I don't mean me and her. I mean me and these other two archangels who looked at you and noticed that your title was a dig at me revealing that she is Archangel Vehuel. She is. And she gonna be that until either she decides she don't want to be that or until... You know what I'm saying? Kingdom come and she don't need to be that. And it ain't you or nobody else going to fucking do nothing about it. See, you want to talk about a bully, but you don't want making videos about her. Huh? Fancy that. So be careful who you fucking with, because a lot of the people that I have told, you know, are angels or gods or deities and, and whatnot and have high anointings on them or highly important spiritual lives ahead of them or highly important spiritual missions 
they are also under my protection. I don't, that's why they tell me to tell them. It's almost like, well, it's not like just giving spiritual clout. It's like, well, Michael, go and tell her that's who she is. Go and tell him that's who he is. Go empower that person. Go and go and share with them the greatness that's within them because they may not see it. And even if they do see it, they need sometimes we all need a fucking pat on the back or a hug or a, an encouraging word. Everybody likes that. Everybody in their right mind likes a positive word and positive reinforcement and reward. And I'm not saying I rewarded her. I'm telling you what I did as told to by the higher powers, whether you believe in them or not. I did what I was told. So don't throw any more fucking digs at me with your raggedy ass non-existent channel. Because I'm really getting tired of skinning you bitches and flaying you and hanging you up like them white men did in Europe. Oh, you forgot I was King Uther? You know, you can't have shout out to the lady who said this to me a while ago, one of my clients. You can't have the word ruthless without Uther being in there. Don't forget who you fucking with. You got one in the hospital right now because they was running their mouth on me for months. They in the hospital about to get diagnosed with some shit they ain't never going to get rid of. So be careful. And I'm not threatening you. I'm just saying I don't want to have no more drama with you people. I mind my business. I don't come out here bothering nobody without no motherfucking problem with me first. If they don't step to me, I don't say, I don't, I don't bother them. If they not fucking around trying to trick me, be up in my dreams, steal my, you know, steal my content, you know what I'm saying? Moseying around and, and sticking their nose up in my shit where they ain't got no business, you know, or attacking Soul Tribe. I don't have no problem with people like that. And let me also say this to the CIA. I know y'all had something to do with that man who is blood related to me. I don't give a fuck if he's white or not. That is a black man. And that is my soul brother. I know y'all had something to do with him being pulled over and arrested. And he don't listen to my channel. But I'm damn sure aware of him. And he is German and Irish. And that is soul tribe. Don't fuck with him again. Because that is an angel too. He's a reader. And he's very gifted and he is very much tapped in with me. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about because he in the South. And it's and I think it's in Louisiana because it's his uh his dialect and the um his dialect is like N New Orleans area, Bayou area of Louisiana. Don't send no more fucking cops to pull him over talking about a window being halfway down. Cause see, I caught wind of that shit. Y'all always fucking with Soul Tribe, and then you wonder why you get your ass fucked up. And I ain't talking about the CIA, I'm just talking about people in general. Cause see, they done did their shit, but at the same time, I done been loyal and done what the fuck I was supposed to do as the being that I am. You messing with innocent people. And I don't mean innocent as in they live in perfect lives. I mean innocent as in y'all just be testing their gangster to see if you can break down. And we all have trials and tribulations, but some of that shit is just out of pocket and you know better. So see, anybody that's fancying themselves an empress wouldn't be running around picking fights with motherfucking angels and archangels. You ain't no fucking empress. And that's all I need to say. Those be the main ones that be fucking karmics, devils. We can see the demon within you. We can see the reptile behind your eyes. Those be the main ones talking about I'm the Empress and I'm an Empress and I'm an Empress and Empress, Empress Channel 101 and Empress Readings 101 and Empress, uh, Empress Shea, Shea Butter, uh, Bomba Clot, Dreadlock. Uh, get the fuck out of here. You ain't no fucking Empress. And that's not, a, you know, I'm not arguing with you about it. I'm just saying your behavior says a lot. What the fuck you got a beef with her for? When I when when I'm picking up that you're just really jealous of her and you're jealous of me and you're jealous of God knows who else. Jealousy is a motherfucker. Jealousy will get you killed. Take it from the motherfucker that's laid up in the hospital right now, hiding off of YouTube that lost everything for running her mouth on me. Including her cust including custody of her fucking child. And that ain't no lie that came out of her mouth on a live stream. She admitted she lost custody of her daughter. So be careful fucking with me. 
I don't give a fuck if it's a shade, a dig, or whatever. If I'm not disrespecting you and I'm not bothering you, stay in your fucking place before you get put in it. And see, the thing about me is I don't just put people in their place. I don't just sit them down in a chair. I bury motherfuckers. And you can take that literally, literally, figuratively, allegorically, however, metaphorically, however the fuck you want to take it. I bury them because you ain't going to rise back up on me, motherfucker. And I ain't talking about just you. I'm just saying the spirit, the spirit, the energy. Once I swing, I swing. I swing to decapitate. I don't swing to, to cut no arm and, and, and lacerate no hand. I swing to cut the head off of the snake, period. I come to break the head of the snake off of the neck. As Dr. Peter once prophesied, I am. So if you want to rumble with angels and archangels and people that are part of my soul tribe, if you feel like you want to flex your muscles, that's your free will. Keep that same energy when you get rolled on, though, okay? Just keep that same energy when you get rolled on. Because when I'm made aware of certain things, usually that's when the bad karma hits the person. I don't give a fuck who they fucking with. If that's Soul Tribe or if that's somebody that's doing the right thing and I get wind of it, usually that's when the fucking gavel goes down on that person's head because I've been made aware of it and consciously and spiritually I'm aware that that's an enemy and that's a threat to somebody who is blood related to me and spiritually related to me. So that's when they get knocked down like fucking bowling pins. And it's too many people stepping into the ring when they don't have the fucking cojones or the clitoral fortitude or the goddamn wherewithal to stand up and fight nobody. You can't fight your motherfucking self in the mirror, so I know you can't fight me or her, <laughs> okay? You couldn't fight yourself from putting on that raggedy ass fucking wig on your head, ho. So be careful who you throwing sub subliminals at in your little titles. Because you got on there and ran your mouth and I didn't even listen to the whole thing because it was straight up lies. Just know that I know. Anyway, thank you all for listening. For the rest of you, it's 7.40 p.m. Saturday, March 19, 2022. I don't know why I wanted to say 2020, but 2022. Maybe something happened for somebody out there on March 19, 2020. But um, either way. I will be back with you all soon. I have some lectures on spiritual matters coming up. Um, I did forget to put the links for where I did the did my prayer. I didn't know I was Archangel Michael back then, but I did the uh, Archangel Michael Latin exorcism prayer in Latin and English. If you scroll back down my channel to about January or February 2020, you'll see it. I forgot to put the link there. And if you're interested again in this meditation music, I don't have any rights. It's, you know, it's not my music. I just like to have my background music throughout the day. And I like to set the mood and music is very therapeutic and healing to me. I've always been musically gifted and had motherfuckers not, you know, fucked up my throat. I would have probably still been exercising my little creative gift of singing in private not i don't want to be no singer for public i'm just saying in private but even so i'll put the link for those interested it's a very nice soothing track and many blessings to soul tribe many blessing to blessings and much abundance and prosperity and protection safety and well-being to uh the divines out there divine feminines divine masculines true divine feminines true divine masculines chosen ones elect ones eternals immortals you know what i'm saying originals all right the anointed ones the shadow workers the light workers okay the light beings and even the protective dark beings the high vibrational ancestors much love to all of y'all and to y'all wicked ones y'all gonna keep getting bent over and fucked <laughs> Not to be vulgar, but that's just what it is. Y'all keep y'all keep running up against us. You're going to keep, like I said, smashing against us like motherfucking cars and crash dummies against hard-ass goddamn rock. Period. See, because most of us higher vibrational beings, we have high water element. Even if we're fire signs, earth signs, or air, we have high water element. So therefore, we can flow over and through any circumstance and any container we're put in. We magically fit. We magically become at home. Even if but for a time. 
water is the only element that mankind has not been able now I won't say the only element water is one of the main elements that mankind has not been able to duplicate despite knowing what it's made of huh that's why I call y'all originals immortals eternals okay because there's only one of you and there ever only will be one that's why you are Neo a one the ones the ones not the zeros the ones of binary code. Binary code is made up of zero and one. You're the ones, the neos, you're not the zeros. See, the zeros are the agent smiths, the empty seaters, the uh, doppelganger hoes, the karmics, okay? The draconians, the reptilians that are soul suckers, the energy vampires, the devils cloaked in human flesh, you know, the incubi and the succubi and the like, the, the vampires, the other types of vampires, you know, the negative shapeshifters, because there are some very positive, cool ass shapeshifters in gen out there. I am gen bloodline or gen lineage. I am not a gen though. You know, <laughs> we know what's up. I'll talk to you later. Namaste.